Welcome everybody. Um, so let's let's start off by verifying that um, Chairman Haymeister can hear us and be heard. Denny, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. And we can hear you. All right, good. So I'll call to order the um, public hearing for September 13th. Oh, and uh, no, it's just call of order first, then the pledge of flag. <laughs> What? Okay. So please okay, join. With that. Please join me with the pledge of allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Read the paper. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're supposed to be avoiding crowding. <laughs> so um, we're going to start off with talking about the proposed ordinance 348, the rural district zoning update. This is a public hearing. Uh, <clears throat> we invite everybody to come and comment. Um, please, when you do so, come up to the podium so you can be recorded. Uh, and I, I, would, I would ask that Please don't repeat what somebody else just said. I mean, I agree with what so-and-so just said, and I want to repeat it all. So let's, let's try to keep it moving forward, but we certainly want to hear from everybody. And for the folks that are on the Zoom, um, if you all, except for Denny, because he's the chairman, if you all could mute yourselves, and then if you want to speak or provide a comment, raise your digital hand or put something in the chat. I'll be monitoring both of them and then you'll be able to participate. We'll be able to hear you. We won't be able to, people in the room will not be able to see you, but we'll be able to hear you. So you can provide a comment um, that way. Okay. And people in the room, our note taker, our minute taker is watching remotely. So it's very important that if you get up to speak, please identify yourself when you do so. Okay, do you want to introduce this? Yes, Adam. I'd be happy to. Maybe one more person in this thing, okay. So in 2012, the Planning Commission began a comprehensive review of the township's zoning regulations. The Commission's review concluded that the ordinances that regulate development within the township's rural areas should be updated to account for changes in land use patterns, to provide opportunities for agricultural uses to modernize, and to improve consistent with consistency with the Center Region Comprehensive Plan. In 2014, the Commission began analyzing the township's rural areas in greater detail through the designated rural areas project. This project focused on identifying long-range planning goals for rural properties along with a zoning implementation strategy to help accomplish those goals. To complete this project, the Planning Commission analyzed the locations of existing land uses, natural features, and environmental constraints utilizing a geographic information system. In order to gain a local perspective, township staff met with several Harris Township farmers to discuss the changing nature of agriculture in Pennsylvania and the region. The ability to diversify agricultural operations was cited as a concern for the long-term financial sustainability of local farms. The final designated rural areas report recommended the creation of several new zoning districts and supplemental regulations. This report was presented to the Board of Supervisors in September 2015. In 2016, the Planning Commission began drafting the new zoning districts and supplemental regulations that are contained within the proposed zoning update. The Commission began with drafting the Conservation Design Subdivision Regulations, which will be utilized for future residential development in the Agricultural Zoning District. Three public open houses were held in April 2017 in order to receive feedback on these regulations. Public feedback on the Conservation Design Regulations was generally positive. Between 2017 and 2018, the Planning Commission completed drafting new, re new zoning districts and supplemental regulations for the rural zoning update. The draft regulations were presented to the Board of Supervisors in January 2019, at which time the Board asked that the Commission conduct a series of public open houses to obtain feedback on the draft ordinances. Staff prepared a comprehensive rural rezoning report as well as an online story map to help inform the public. Three public open houses were held in April 2019, and public feedback on the proposed regulations was generally positive. Throughout 2019, the Commission conducted a final review of the proposed regulations and made several minor amendments. The draft regulations were forwarded onto the solicitor in January 2020 for review. 
The comprehensive rural zoning update proposes the creation of three new zoning districts, revisions to the agricultural district, conservation design subdivision regulations, as well as other supplemental regulations. The ordinance has been reviewed by the Center Region Planning Commission and they did not offer any comment. The area proposed for rezoning has been posted in accordance with the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. The public hearing has also been advertised twice in the Center Daily Times in accordance with the MPC. Okay, so it's time for public comment. Anybody like to approach the podium? I want to start off, please. Good evening, my name is Susan Bucknam. I'm an attorney and I represent Michael and Tara Eimel who own and operate Nittany Meadow Farm located on Route 322 in Harris Township. Um, my specialty is agricultural law and I represent uh, owners and operators of agricultural operations. Um, we're here this evening to address the township's proposal to enact the new zoning ordinance package that would rezone Nittany Meadow Farm from agricultural to rural residential. We're requesting that the board vote not to enact the proposed zoning package this evening in order to allow for consideration of the issues I'm gonna to raise tonight um, for Nittany Meadow Farm to be kept in agricultural zoning district. Um, I did speak with your solicitor this afternoon and I reviewed with him the um, legal issues I'm gonna be discussing with you tonight um, and made him aware of you know, our position and um, so I don't know if he reached out to you, but he's aware of what this presentation is going to be talking about the legal issues and the impacts on Nittany uh, Meadow Farm. Um, so what I'm going to be reviewing with you are the state statutes that protect agricultural operations and limit municipal authority to prohibit or limit those operations. I'm also going to review with you why Nittany Meadow Farm should remain zoned in the township's agricultural district as well as the significant economic impacts that a rezoning would have on Nittany Meadow Farm. The Agriculture Communities and Rural Environment Statute was enacted by the General Assembly in order to ensure the long-term sustainability of agriculture and normal agricultural operations in a manner that's consistent with state policies and statutes. Um, that statute is typically referred to as ACRE. The purpose of ACRE is to protect normal agricultural operations from unauthorized local ordinances. ACRE is designed as the mechanism to reinforce existing state laws that regulate and protect agricultural operations. What ACRE does is it precludes a municipality from enacting or enforcing an unauthorized local ordinance. An unauthorized local ordinance is defined as one where the municipality either is preempted by state law from enacting it or they don't have authority. Um, and it prohibits or limits a normal agricultural operation. A normal agricultural operation is defined under ACRE using the Right to Farm Act definition, which includes the activities and practices and equipment and procedures that farmers use to produce agricultural commodities and that are on not less than 10 acres, or even if on less than 10 acres, they can generate an anticipated annual gross income of $10,000. So that's how a normal agricultural operation is defined under state law. Acre, the acre statute provides two ways for the owner or operator of a normal agricultural operation to have an ordinance reviewed. They can either submit a request to the Office of Attorney General because they have an acre program and they will review municipal ordinance and take action against the municipality if they find it's an unauthorized local ordinance. In addition, acre provides for the owner or operator of an agricultural operation to, to file their own acre action in the original jurisdiction of the Commonwealth Court to challenge the ordinance. And there are provisions under acre for an award of attorney's fees to that farmer if they prevail. Um, I am, uh, you know, just as, so you know my background, I worked at the Attorney General's office. I was a senior deputy attorney general who worked on the ACRE program from its inception, and I built the program over 10 years that I was there. So I issued the decisions that have to do with these issues. And 
you know, the situation with my client's um, property, Nittany, Nittany Meadow Farm, falls squarely within an acre challenge. Um, there are many state statutes and regulatory programs that come into play under acre depending on the subject matter, but for our purposes, the municipality's planning code, which you've heard referenced this evening, that's the enabling statute that allows a township to enact zoning, but with it comes purposes, responsibilities, and limitations. Under the um, municipality's planning code, or MPC, one of the purposes is for the municipalities to ensure that municipalities enact zoning ordinances that facilitate the present and future economic viability of existing agricultural operations in the Commonwealth and do not prevent or impede the, owners op the owner or operator's need to change or expand their operations in the future in order to remain viable. In order to accomplish that purpose, the MPC under section 603 sets forth explicit limits on municipal authority that they cannot enact zoning ordinances that regulate commercial agricultural production in a way that would exceed the Right to Farm Act or the Agricultural Area Security Law. In addition, the municipality's planning code requires that zoning ordinances shall encourage the continuity, continuity development and the viability of agricultural operations and zoning ordinances shall not restrict agricultural operations or changes or expansions to agricultural operations in areas, geographic areas where agriculture has traditionally been present. The Right to Farm Act places limitations on municipal authority. As the township is aware, it protects an agricultural operator's right to engage in direct commercial sales as of right. And what Harris Township has recognized through their efforts in this rezoning is that agritainment uses are utilized by farmers to bring people to the farm to engage in those direct commercial sales and offer activities in conjunction with those sales. The agricultural area security law, which Harris Township has established an agricultural security area, also provides protection to agricultural operations. Under the agricultural area security law, a municipality shall encourage the continuity, development, and viability of agriculture within the agricultural security area by not enacting laws that would unreasonably restrict farm practices or structures. Again, the township through this rezoning effort to enact new zoning has specifically recognized that a farm practice includes agritainment activities. In addition to ACRE and the state law requirements for municipalities to protect and preserve agriculture, a municipality's zoning ordinance must have a reasonable relation to the police power to protect health, safety, and welfare. There has to be a connection to what the, the township's imposing to health, safety, and well to protection of health, safety, and welfare, and it cannot be unreasonable, arbitrary, or lead to absurd results. So that legal framework in mind, and that I've just oh, okay. <laughs> that legal framework in mind, I'm going to discuss the Nittany Meadow Farm situation and why the rezoning violates these mandates and protections afforded to agricultural operations, which would trigger ACRE. The Nittany Meadow Farm has existed as a commercial production farming operation since the 1800s. The Imels produce beef, pork, and goat commodities using the 26 acres that comprise the farming operation. They produce a variety of crops as well, and some of their agricultural commodities are specifically designated to donate to food banks in the center county region. They also have a long existing bed and breakfast facilities that are used to provide farm stays. Agricultural lodging, i.e. farm stays, are an agritainment use. Um, in addition to farm tours and goat yoga as referenced by the township in the materials it's provided to the public. The farm also contains natural features that should be preserved including prime agricultural soils, high quality stream with the headwaters of Spring Creek, 
wetlands, floodlands, historic farm, and barn designations. In 2018, Harris Township enrolled the 17-acre parcel of Nittany Meadow Farm into its ag security area. The purpose of enrolling farmland into an ASA is the townships designating that as preserving that farmland for the future. So the township's enrollment was to ensure that that parcel was preserved for agricultural use. The township's enrollment of that farmland in the ASA means that the township determined that the ASA criteria to enroll it was satisfied for Nittany Meadow Farm. That means that at least 50% of the soils were class one through four, that it was consistent with the comprehensive plan, that it was zoned for agriculture, that is viable agricultural land, that the nature and extent of the farm improvements on the, on the farm are consistent with viable agricultural operations, and that the trends in agricultural economics and technology would support that farm being, farmland being preserved for the future. Back in 2001, Nittany Meadow Farm was subdivided into three parcels. There's a five and three acre parcel and a 17 acre parcel. There has been no development of the smaller parcels and they remain in agricultural production. The IMLs would be limited to only one single family dwelling on each of those small parcels, two houses, that's it. There's no further subdivision that can happen on, that prop on those properties. The 17 acre portion of that property is designated as open space. The only use for that open space under the township's ordinance is for agriculture. Therefore, the IMLs not only want to, but they have to use their 17 acres for agricultural production as recognized by this township by enrolling the parcel in the ASA. Despite the fact that the township recognizes agritainment as a use vital to agricultural operations to maintain economic viability by providing extra income, it will be precluding the IMLs ability to engage in agritainment by rezoning the farm to re rural residential, thus significantly impacting the economic viability of their agricultural operation. In addition to the township's enrollment of the IMLs program for farmland preservation, they could, have, they could sell their development rights and have it permanently preserved. However, if the township rezones the but way below what the township would want in the rural residential district. This is not simply about rezoning. It implicates the township's statutory obligations to protect and preserve agriculture and to promote the development, continuity, and viability of agricultural operations and not unreasonably restrict them. The enactment of the proposed zoning will trigger ACRE and potential involvement by the Attorney General and also the potential for a private ACRE action in the Commonwealth Court. I've spoken to your solicitor about all these issues and the state statutes that I've discussed with you this evening. We also discussed the board's ability to take a vote on the proposed, to take it to table taking a vote on the proposed zoning so that we could establish a dialogue to address the legal implications and the economic impacts that I've brought to your attention today. I'm respectfully requesting on behalf of my clients, Michael and Tara Imel and Nittany Meadow Farm, that the board reserve voting tonight and discuss these legal issues with its solicitor before taking any action. I appreciate your time to address the board on behalf of my clients. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, there's a reason we have a solicitor, and I'm not an attorney. And there are four attorneys. If this is a legal action, then we'll do it in court with our solicitor. Um, I'd intended to ask that remarks be held brief. I appreciate the length of time that it took to do this. If anybody else has comments on this, we'd be delighted to hear them. But please do keep
keep them brief so that we can get out of here before midnight? <laughs> Anybody? Yes, please. I'm going to remove this so you can hear me. It's very difficult sometimes. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Harvey Hanlon. I'm a practicing optometrist in Bullsburg. My wife and I both own a building on the, in the village of Bullsburg as well as a residence in Hunt Ridge Manor. I've now attended six Zoom meetings, one live meeting. I've heard all the presentations and made comments before and listened at the last meeting and actually watched it again today on CNET of the comments of the supervisors, the five elected supervisors on their position regarding this rezoning from agricultural to rural residential. Seems as if there are a couple of supervisors that actually looked in depth at this problem and not in a um, sort of a oversight of a thing. I know certainly Supervisor Hardin looked at the methodology and as he said at the last meeting at a very difficult time determining that this property really fit in rural residential. And also Supervisor Graham spoke about the history of farms in Harris Township as well as the history of Nittany Meadow Farms and what it's always been. And most important, the desire of the owner of the property to keep it as a farm and not develop it into a bunch of houses. So following that meeting, which was the vote was three to two, even though you don't raise hands, Amy, I understand that. Robert's rules say you should have your vote in there as far as who voted how. So there was a um, signs, pub uh, uh, the public notice signs put up in front of all of the developments on September the 3rd, on Friday the 3rd of September. And in simultaneous with that, we had a bunch of individuals who were taking a petition around to the residents in Harris Township requesting that this property be kept as agriculture and not move to rural residential. Obviously, our manager got a number of phone calls about the sign because she did a 10 minute and 47 second video on Facebook to try to explain it. Um, the sign was not legible, unfortunately. Uh, I'm an eye doctor, I couldn't read it, but it was pretty small. Um, but it certainly triggered a lot of questions from people about what's going on in the township. So after dealing with, uh, we had a number of individuals, as I said, who went and, and took the petition door to door and spent a lot of time discussing what's going on in Harris Township and the actions. And a number of those individuals that signed that petition, I know in my neighborhood are here tonight because they're concerned. I'm gonna present the petitions to you for your records because I have copies and you need to have it for yours of the over 300 individuals in the very short period of time we had to do this uh, who disagree with what's happening. I guess the ironic thing about this, it's all about a map and it's just a map. Maps can be changed, but the effects of this map on this family are dramatic. They have a farm. It's been said by one of the supervisors, well, that's not a viable farm, which isn't true. But their fiscal problem with that farm, if they can't do agritainment, will be significant. Can they farm? Yes, they can still farm. Can they do what the other farms do? Absolutely not under proposed or zoning ordinance. So I guess what I'm concerned about in the last thing, and I guess Supervisor Lord, since you're the vice chairman and you're now the backup quarterback tonight since the chairman's not here, I would pose one question to you because we never hear questions of what we say or comments we make. And that is, can you tell us what's in it for the township to change it? What is gonna make a big difference if this property is in ag or in rural residential? I would, I would since you put it to me, I would say that um, our staff, our planning commission, uh, this has been a nine-year process. It's not something that's been hurriedly done. And so my instinct, and some of my colleagues may disagree, we, we 
do often, we do not often disagree, but we do occasionally <laughs> disagree. Can you speak louder? Yeah, I, I say, I say we, we occasionally disagree. But um, my, we've put in nine years in the drafting this. We've had multiple opportunities for people to come forward and have input into the process. And so I can just speak for myself. I can't speak for the collective group of us. But I think the process has been sound. OK, thank you for that. And so when you have staff people to give you information, that's important. But the ultimate decision on what you do is yours. You are the five elected officials that we elect. We only have two ways we can do things as residents. We can come and voice our opinion and hopefully have interaction, which doesn't honestly happen very often. OK? Um, we can do a petition to try to tell you what we believe. And the only other thing we have is at the ballot box in November because we want representation that we believe truly represents what we care about. And if farming is so critical in Harris Township, as we all talk about it, we don't understand this proposed change for this property at this time under this ordinance. Thank you. This is the courts. Oh, that's another issue. You want to bring up the courts. Our only concern as residents is, what's it going to cost of our tax dollars to fight this in court? And if, you're make, if you can make a better decision to avoid a court issue, doesn't that make a whole lot more sense? Courts should be the last thing that we ever go to. Thank you. I want to give you the petitions. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yep. We're briefly done. Thank you. <laughs> I got something even briefer. Yes. Is that possible? Please go to please. the podium. Uh, and identify, your, and identify yourself, please. You just jog over here. <laughs> yeah, I can't hardly even walk here. So. Uh, my name is Joe Bastardi. I live next door to Harvey. And the uh, only thing I want to say is what a great job. We've lived in, we've lived in Bowlesburg now since, I guess, uh, 1994. Wonderful place, great place, great neighbors. And one of the be best thing about Bowlesburg is we we'll sort of love each other, right? These people bought that farm, right? No one told them that it was going to get flipped or changed or whatever. And I know from my point of view that the people have a right to live the way the rules are set. And the rules were that that was an agricultural place. Maybe if you want to change it later, you can make it clear the next person who buys it that they may have to do that. But these are wonderful people and each person should be able to live their life according to the way they want to live their life and do what they want to do. Now, they, I may regret saying this because their goats may be up in my backyard, which is <laughs> whatever, but uh, they're, they're wonderful people. And I just think that each person should, if you, if you had a set of ground rules established and it was ag and you bought it and you spent that money on it, you ought to be able to live there the way you want to live there and do what you want to do. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yes, please. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is. Um, my name is Keith McElhaney. I live at uh, Round Hill Road. Uh, I had just found out about this when a truck pulled up into my driveway and discussed this whole problem. And it got me angry, and I'm not gonna lie, it got me angry. This should not happen. I completely agree with all the legal stuff that said, the biggest problem I have is the answer to the question of why you're doing this. You do not have a definite answer to do this, and you're messing with somebody's life. My cynical person thinks you do have a reason for doing it, and that's so you can annex a private property as opposed to a working farm that has income. And that's, I don't know a lot, because you take these comments before any discussions happen. But my cynical person is saying that you're doing this for this whole highway going through here and destroying people's homes and it's gonna destroy this guy's farm. And that's what I believe. You can correct me and I hope you do because it's gotten myself angry enough to talk to my neighbors, get everybody together and we'll sign petitions until everything comes in. 
We'll support him 100%, and we will not support you if you pass this. Is there anybody else? Yes, please. Um, okay, my name is Cindy Harding. Uh, my husband and I own a farm here in Harris Township, so we're farm owners. Um, I actually have a couple questions first and a couple comments. Um, I, I read the letter, Amy, that you're the uh, public hearing notice that you provided. Um, the, the planning commission that came up with, that helped you do all this data collection research, that's a Harris Township group, not a center region group, right? Okay. Were there any farmers on that commission? Lawson and Kim Tate and um, Bob Anderson and a couple of the other farmers at the very beginning of this process back in 13 or 14. But they were not on the commission. They were not members no of the planning farmers commission. On no. this group speaking for we, all of us in agriculture on the commission. Not on the planning commission. We did hold a series of public open houses and we sent letters to members of the farming community and we tried to hold those open houses around. We understood farmers have different hours than. Obviously, people in local government, we tried to hold them around your hours so that you could We came to one of those meetings. So we came to the sort of end result and heard some of the discussion that was being had. My question was just, was there a, were there farmers on the actual commission? There are not. Given, no. given that the decisions that are ultimately going to be made are going to impact farmers a great deal. Okay, that's my first question. Um, my second question is for the supervisors before you, Amy. Um, were any other farms impacted? Or have, are any other fact farmers farms impacted by this zoning plan besides Nittany Meadow? Mark can answer that. Yeah, so um, I think there are some other open space parcels that are impacted by this um, that are in agricultural production. The Rocky Farm along 45 comes to mind where all the new residential homes are going in. There's a large open space parcel along there that they're going to, I mean, they've been farming it. Um, and then Trying to think, there there might be some. Uh, let's see here, Laurel. I don't know if Laurel Hills is actively farmed or not. It, it has been. Okay, so Laurel Hills to the to the south of 322 also has an open space parcel that will be rural residential that can continue to be farmed. Uh, and then there's I think at least one on the uh, Shingletown Road side of, of town that um, was farmed in the past, the uh, old Rittenhouse property along 45. Uh, how are those those property owners notified? That their, that their particular property was going to be impacted. So, I mean, we did send out, and the last public, hearing, public meeting we did open house was in 19. So we did try to go out of our way to send letters to property owners to get them notified so that they would understand that this was happening. We didn't, and, and I'll touch on the gentleman who brought up the highway. We have nothing to do with 322. That's the state of Pennsylvania. And we found out last Tuesday that they're going to take out our brand new maintenance facility with the one interchange. <laughs> so we're, we have a lot of anger towards the state because they just told us that on Tuesday and we just built the facility. So we tried to not do that with this process. We tried to involve as many people as we could and we did send letters out to folks as well. And then again, the pandemic happened and we were meeting virtually and we started putting the planning commission before had never been on CNET. And when they, with the pandemic happened, they met virtually. So we recorded all of their meetings and put them on our YouTube channel so folks could follow along that way. So we have tried to be as transparent as we could be through the process. Well, I asked that question because as a farm owner, I'm a wee bit disturbed to hear that this kind of change can take place without the permission or maybe even the knowledge of the property owner. That's very disturbing to me as a farm owner. Um, and also, for all our commissioners, our elected officials here, um, it's also disturbing to me to think that my municipality would ever participate or consider removing land from productive agriculture into any other kind of zoning without, if that's something that the property owner wants to do, that's their right as a property owner, but that the township would do that uh, sort of um, yank the rug out from a property owner is absolutely wrong. And I agree with the man who spoke. The, this is just a map. A farm is not just a name. It's not just a designation on a map. H how many people ate dinner here before you came? Did you have beef or chicken or pork? Or did you eat some vegetables? 
Where do you think that came from? That came from a farm. We have people in the center region who like to eat local food, and we grow that food on a farm. It's not just a name on a map. Um, and as a farm owner, you need to know that the farm community is very disturbed that, the, that this municipality would consider removing land from agriculture. I neglected to say this. I am a farm owner. I'm also the chair of the Center County Farmland Preservation Board. So preserving farmland is very is very important to me. Okay, I need, you need to know that too. Is there anybody else who would like to address the public hearing? We do. Yeah. I'm happy that I came here tonight. I am a new member of the Hunt Ridge Manor development since March 10th. I was in State College. I teach at the university. And when I heard of this thing that was happening here, I, I changed all of my activities today I, didn't, I don't teach on Monday. I teach Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and into the oblivion. And I had to come here tonight because I wanted to hear what was going on. And I applaud your comments and your, your, your professional uh, uh, rendition here. And everybody else that spoke it's very sensitive. You people don't seem to have the sensitivity that was spoken of here by the people who are farmers. I'm not a farmer. When I put my new landscaping stuff out front of my house, I felt like a farmer. <laughs> and it looks great too. But I, I, I'm gonna tell you, you must, you people must really, you're elected, uh, elected uh, officials. You must feel uh, some sensitivity to people who are property owners. As the woman said, you, you can't have the rug pulled out from under you, from beneath your foundation. And that's what the farmers and everybody else is experiencing. That's total devastation. When I bought my property, 124 Ramsey Way, um, you know, I never had the thought of that, you know? And I busted my ass to make it beautiful, and it's still ongoing. And people who live around me will, will tell me that I'm doing a pretty fair job. You know? But you must have an ear, you people must have an ear to all these wonderful people who came out. To, to have some sensitivity and some awareness and recognition of the intrinsic values of what people are talking about. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a no brainer. And you know, it's all about, you know, I, I, I see very clearly and very easily about the monies, <laughs> you know, down the road, you know. So the big question is, why, you know, why be insensitive to all of this body of people and the people who couldn't come tonight, you know? And I'm glad I came. Had no, no amplitude to come here and talk. And, but I felt super moved to, if I, if I went home and didn't express myself, I'm a musician. And when I play, I play. And if I don't do something that is important, then, you know, I played a, a Johnny Mathis show in, in, down in Rockville on Saturday. And, and 
Johnny Mathis would say, bravo, Fitz. You know? So I, I, I'm, I'm saying to you, you must dig deeper to see if you, you people dig deeper to see if you can find some sensitivity and awareness of what all of us are talking about. Again, I'm not a farmer, but I got it there. As a woman said, um, I got a new grill, and I fixed I fix some really 97% beef today. A little bit, because I'm on a diet. I've lost 55 pounds. <laughs> you know, so, it, you know, so uh, that's important. That's super important. And you must hear what all these people, even the people that aren't talking, you must hear their thoughts. Their, their thoughts are echoing deeply within. So much echo that you must feel it. Thank you. I am Langston J. Fitzgerald the third. Dr. Langston J. Fitzgerald the third. And again, let's identify yourself first so we don't have to. My name is Daryl Steffensmeyer. And I, uh, I come up here a little bit differently. I know a fair number of the people here that are serving us. I have a great deal of respect for them. And I think they have made good judgments many times in the past, not knowing much about the reasoning behind this 3-2 decision. I've not heard anything tonight. The re only response I aware of, we went through a good process. But I would like to know how each of you, the reasons you get, you have for the decision that was made. Uh, Nigel and Frank, and down the line. Uh, maybe others know, I don't know. But I think it's a haunting question. Maybe there are good reasons. I listened to the presentation. Uh, I know something about a lot of these things. And I thought the presentation was pretty darn strong, but I haven't heard the township manager. Uh, I haven't heard, and maybe it's elsewhere. If there's a place where you have written up and justified what you have done and where there's transparency, I can, I mean, that's a starter, but, and maybe you've done it. And uh, so I, that's the only, that's the response I would like at this particular time. I'd like to get information from you as to how you came down on this, not just that we went through a nine-year process or whatever it was. Thank you. I will comment that this, the decision we made was to hold this public hearing. The decision on this rezoning has not been made. That's what we'll address. Once. Pardon? I said the decision. The decision we made was to hold this public hearing. It was not a decision on this zoning. That is what we will do after the public hearing is closed, and we discuss this in our regular meeting. And I'm sorry, the mask, I hate the damn mask. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anybody else that would like to address, please? I'm uh, Jack Stevens, been in the township. Can you hear me back there? All right, been in the township for about 33 years, did some public service with the township, and I can tell all of you, having been in the Marine Corps and the Pentagon, and this place, and Penn State, a lot of bureaucracies 
that these are honest, open people. They, I think they deserve our trust. Nobody's making any decisions that impact us. They don't consider themselves to have an imperative. They're asking you exactly as you said. Sorry, I don't know your name. We're here to get opinions and attitudes. If you have facts, I want you to present them. My only question is, and I think I know why we're doing this, why these pressures are being put on the township. My experience over the years is that PennDOT and Pennsylvania tries to control its municipalities. That's what's going on. We're citizens. We do have exactly what you've all said, the right for input, but I can tell you we do it in an honest, open way. These are some of the most honest people. But how long have you been a supervisor? Thank you. Okay. The point is that these aren't people who came into town to work for PennDOT. I can tell you, if you really want to know who the enemy is, it's in Harrisburg, and I believe China, who needs another belt and another road through Pennsylvania. We are the keystone state. This is a keystone for truck traffic to deliver to the Boston Washington quarter. If you want to talk conspiracies and powers and threats, think outside this board who's honest, who's truthful, who wants to do, and I think this hearing is a symbol of that. Want to get your opinion, I believe. There are honest ways to work together. Nobody's paying me to say this. 33 years, I'm satisfied. As far as I know, I think your farmers have legitimate issues. You should press them. My view is that these Board of Supervisors are going to listen. This is a joint committee. I mean, several of you have mentioned living in Bowlesburg and Harris Township is a cooperative effort. So let's do that and make sure that the people on Pennsylvania State and the people in Washington tell us what to do. I had the same question. Why are we doing this? My only question left is what you see as explaining the needs of Harris Township. That's your job. Our job is to listen, try to work with the board to get something done. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. important events and everybody needs to be heard uh, we have We've somebody on zoom yeah. that would like Rebecca to language would like to speak go ahead Rebecca hi I'm on zoom land here thank you for doing this with zoom I'm gonna move because we've got two okay <laughs> two devices on and there's a sound delay um, I did hear about this a couple years ago and came to the meeting and talked to you about some of my concerns. I live on West Branch Road on a farm and I am concerned also with how you're limiting within the agricultural area who can do agritainment and how it can be done and the um, as well as what can be sold at a farm stand. And I do not understand you have the right to limit how an agricultural uses of land differ depending on where you live. And that's what's happening. Um, if you have an arterial street, whatever that is defined to be, which I didn't find the definition in the ordinance, but when I went to the meeting a couple of years ago, you said that Branch Road does not count as an arterial street, although we do have a stop light at one end and we do have stop signs and we're cleared by the road by the state. But that would mean that I could have a winery on my property, but I can't have any events at my winery. And that's how you've got it set up right now. So I think this needs some work on the um, not only with how you've got your zoning map, but also how you are differentiating in the agricultural area as far as how we can make money on our farm. Thank you. 
Is there anybody else who would like to address the public hearing? Please. Hi. I wasn't prepared to do this. Ruth Bailey Catherman, 108 Mesa Drive. This is very upsetting. A hundred plus year farm and the township wants to dictate to my family and everybody else up that road what we can and cannot do. I find it very disturbing. I run a successful boarding business. I have people in and out. I don't think anybody's complaining. And yet you're telling me I can't build a certain size building if I wanted to have a training facility. There's nothing in here. The ordinance says I can't do that whether I want to or not. The regulations for an indoor riding ring is 120 by 80. I have enough property to do that. If this goes through, I can't do that. My son cannot run a training facility if he wants to. I just don't see the right with this agritainment. That's my real issue, agritainment. What is the definition of that? Whatever anybody wants it to be. I mean, is, is riding horses agritainment? I guess it is. I'm not holding a rodeo. I'm not holding concerts. A winery can hold concerts three fields away. I hear their music. I enjoy it. I'm not picking on the winery. But what is, what's not? You know, the farm down the road on 45 can sell whatever they want to, whether it's grown there or not grown there. What, because they live on the right highway? Is that what we're talking about? Because I live on Bailey Lane, I can't sell corn. I can't get pony rides. I can't goat walk. I want goat yoga. Maybe I want goat yoga. I mean, let's do it, right? Yep, exactly. I, I just don't understand the real reason to regulate what I can do on my own property that I own. It's not rented to the township. We own it, right? That's all, thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to address the public hearing, please? That was my wife that just spoke. Gets, You're not going to say the same thing, are you? No, I'm not. I'm going <laughs> to just tell you that she gets very emotional. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> we have a 23 and a quarter acre farm on Bailey Lane, and it is what's left of the Bailey family farm. That her father was born on that farm, and he would be over 100 years old now if he was still living. So I mean, you've heard from new people to the township, you know, all over the place, but we are far from that. So just so you know that, that that piece of property is targeted here as being not a farm. And we make hay, we raise beef, we have seven horses, three goats. Um, so what, I don't know how you call it anything but farming. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you. Hi everyone. I don't live in Harris Township, but I came with a friend tonight and I want to speak about as a person who lives in College Township and who had this happen to her years ago when they put the bypass in. PennDOT wanted to put the bypass in. They didn't care that the fact that there were wetlands that they were going to destroy. You might know them as Millbrook Marsh now. Okay. Well, they destroyed a great part of that. that and my life is now really a living hell. I mean, I have the bypass going by. I can't enjoy my deck. But we came to meetings like this, and we protested. I wrote letters. My neighbors wrote letters. We did everything we could. But PennDOT wanted to build it, so that was that. And they changed everything so that they could destroy wetlands. And as I'm looking at this as an outsider, but what I'm seeing is like their avenue to doing this is by rezoning that farm. And that's what they're pushing for. That's what PennDOT does. And you gotta fight them. Don't let them do it. 
don't let them do it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, missed that one. We don't. <laughs> unfortunately, we don't tell PennDOT what to do. <laughs> so, so I mean, just. Is there anybody else who would like to address this public hearing? Please. Please Thank you. Yourself. Yeah, let's start out with that. So I want to say, first of all, that I love living in Bullsburg. My name is Lee King. We live in Bear Meadows Village. We've lived in Bullsburg since 1987. Um, and I thank you all for what you do because you are here week in, week out, and doing this. Um, I also love the agricultural properties and work that's done here. I walk up Bailey Lane <laughs> um, at least a couple times a week. I have horses out in Collier, so I drive by Nittany Meadow Farm almost every day. And one of the reasons I love Bullsburg is I like that green space. And I drive into State College and I am so saddened by what has happened there. I am so saddened when I, when I go into town. I graduated from Penn State and it is nothing um, like the town it was when I was a student. And I guess that's that's my plea to you is to keep Bullsburg pastoral, to keep the farms and, 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 and give the farmers free reign to do what they need to do so that they can make money. Um, I think traditional farming is getting harder and harder and more and more farmers are looking at different ways to be able to make a profit and keep their farms. And I, just hope that you all support that. Thank you. Thanks. We have another. I too will be brief. I'm Jeff Harding. You heard my wife Cindy. Uh, just to add that our, our family farm is just west, west of Catherman's. Uh, uh, our children are the seventh generation there. It's been in the family since about 1840. So we're coming on 200 years on that farm, on that property. Um, I just guess I would say that you made the comment you're here to listen, and we really do appreciate it. This is a very difficult thing for you as well, I'm sure. You're not taking this lightly. But uh, look at this group of people, an overwhelming, overwhelming support for maintaining, being able to maintain the status quo, and I'm sure you recognize that, but hope you, uh, hope you factor that into your, into your decision. And I think it's fair for us to ask, what really is driving this. You've heard that several times and I won't pound that, but I don't know how you would put that out to us or how you would how you would answer that question, but I think there are a lot of people here that would really like to know what's the real story, what's really driving this. So thank you for your time. Well, good evening, board. I appreciate the time and effort that you've certainly put into this. I didn't just do that, did I? Oh, we had a pro coming up. Come on, Jeff. Thank you. My apologies. I, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, what I've heard uh, tonight, I'm, I'm just going to branch off a little bit more on the topic of Bailey Lane. Ed Ferguson, I live up on, live up on Bailey Lane, so I'm neighbors of uh, the Cathermans as well. So it's more the definition and evaluation. Certainly Amy and, and Todd and Mark, I appreciate you responding to the questions I had last week, and I'm sure there were hundreds of emails at least. So it's so the differentiation between what constitutes this rural residential district, uh, which you have, I think, up until the Masons, and then I think there's property beyond that, which I, well, used to be like the Hills Garden, Hillside Garden House with the top of the Bailey Lane is what I'm talking about. I think you know what I'm talking about. And then across the road from that is differentiated as agriculture. But then you've got a patchwork of properties that back up, I think, to state land that are agriculture. And then you've got this rural residential classification. Now, going back the other way, you've got, um, I think, the Mountain View Development on 45 that I think went in in the last year or two. 
but beyond that, closer towards the mountain, there's agricultural, but then you've got a windmill, which is up towards a road, I mean, up towards the mountain, as rural residential. So what I'm seeking, at least some explanation to complete the record, is what factors you considered in making that designation, that difference, because it seems when looking at the map, it's a bit of a patchwork. And my question in my head, is that, is that equitable? Is it fair how that's been divvied up like that? And you know, I know that you went through a lot of work in doing that, but I think, at least from my standpoint, I, I'd like more of an explanation. I think the crowd probably wants a little bit more of that. There's been questions that have kind of gotten at that from the side, how you made, through that, made that decision-making process throughout this, uh, because not everybody probably was able to participate in the process. I know I certainly missed things. And you got two kids, you got two uh, spouses that work full-time. It's kind of tough to address every meeting that you have. So with that, uh, that's one question. Uh, but the other thing that just it struck me is coming through this meeting is, is this really a groundswell effort uh, of the people of Harris Township to want this ordinance change? Or is it more of a, I hate to phrase it like this, but really nothing else kind of gets to the point. Is it more of a paternalistic governmental, I think we need to do something about this fixation on a perceived problem and pursuing it and pursuing it and pursuing it even though maybe do we need to do anything about it is the question. And I don't know that I really have heard that answer. So if you could elaborate on that, I would certainly appreciate that. I know we've had a really long meeting, and I thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to address the public hearing? Okay. Thank you all for your comments and your participation your I'm, patience. I, move, I move that we close public hearing. I have a motion to close the public hearing. The public hearing is closed. Thank now. you. Okay. No, you, you guys want to stick around because we're going to actually now talk about in the regular meeting this proposed ordinance. And then some of you may want to stick around for 322, and that's second on the agenda. We did that on purpose because we figured people wouldn't want to be here till midnight with the rest of us. Uh, my dinner is going to be in a glass. <laughs> um, okay, I will call, call to order the Harris Township Board of Supervisors September 13th meeting. Um, we have done the Pledge of Allegiance. I would um, like to hear a motion to approve the minutes from August 9th public hearing so and August moved. 9th. So moved. I moved and seconded. Amendments, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. nay? Passed. Okay, now is an opportunity for citizens' comments on items that are not on the agenda. Do we have anybody who wants to address us on an item that is not on the agenda? Thank you. Moving on. Wait, Jack Jack wants to address oh. us. Oh, please. I would just like to ask one question. Can you go to the podium, Jack, so oh, they get you on CNET? Okay, okay. All right, I realize this is another hearing. Uh, Jack Stevens, but I do think we've asked what, and in my view, they're external powers driving your moves. And there are, I believe, threats to the township, as there are a lot of local governments. This state has different objectives than the townships and you, and we need to work with the group that we have. So my question is, what do you perceive as the major needs driving you to make these kind of conditions for the rest of the township? I think you're confused. <laughs> okay. We're asking for items that are not on the agenda. I think you're referring to something is that is on the agenda. agenda? Yes, yeah, on the yeah. agenda. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're doing our best. Okay. <laughs> um, so the first item for township business is proposed ordinance 348, rural district zoning update. We've had our public hearing. I know. The five of us, including our chairman who's on Zoom, have been through this multiple times. Um, 
I have nothing more to add myself. Can I? If you when, may when indeed. My turn. You, your turn. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, 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 there, there was two things that happened here tonight that was quite a little bit unprepared for, uh, tabling it, and the Bailey Lane situation. I was, we'd have no request. This is the first we've had any notice of Bailey Lane, so I'm not familiar with what what that is zone, going to propose to be zoned at. I don't, I don't know. Is it proposed to zone RR, Mark? Part of it is zoned RR, and then some of the properties up kind of further to the south are zoned agricultural. Okay, yes. so I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that part of it. That's the first I've heard of this. Um, the, this this ordinance is a very good ordinance. I, I uh, am very pleased with it. Uh, we've, we've had many, many, many uh, hours of men in this. And one of the things that, that I hope that we can work with on this is, and I'll get to what, what the motion is going to, what I'd like to see. Uh, the slopes, I'm, I was concerned of uh, our slopes and uh, our natural district, and it seems to be spelled out very well. Uh, one, of the, one of the items in that, the natural district, was to encourage the preservation of woodlands, woodland, woodlands in rural areas and to protect and regenerate watersheds, encourage prohibit the location of structures on soils and slopes that are generally not suitable for development. And it's, I hope that I'm going to I'm going to endorse that part of it. I hope that it is a strong enough wording, or there are enough uh, uh, caveats in there that we can protect our slopes. Meaning Mount Nittany or Tussie Mountain. I'm sorry, Tussie Mountain. Uh, if from, from not being uh, developed in a lot of developments, which it, in, in some cases it can be. Ferguson Township developed an ordinance years ago that, that I don't think they allow anything to happen up there. I mean, they may be they could be challenged on that. So hopefully our planning commission and our, and our, our planner Mark has done a good job on that one. The only other, and the other thing that I was concerned about is, and it has to do with farming, is that I was concerned of uh, uh, not what is the word for it? Um, uh, large uh, industrial farming, like log, like uh, uh, hormel hog farms, or something that are, are 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 very much of a nuisance. I know in part, parts of this country, York, Pennsylvania, is is getting inundated with with commercial farms, with which are uh, that acres and acres of hog farms, or okay, whatever it is. And I, I'm, I was under. I was told here that we probably uh, cannot do anything about that. <laughs> I don't know if that's quite true or not. But according to what we've heard, we can we can do certain zonings, but we cannot restrict that type of things on farms. But I think I think our farms are generally are not not generally suitable for that area. Probably not. Well, I hope so. So now we get back to the get back to the ordinance. I guess we're not probably not have a lot of debate on this, but I, if you read the minutes, uh, I went on about 15 paragraphs the last time what my feelings were. If you read the minutes there. Uh, the other issue is uh, that uh, I was concerned, and Nigel brought this up the last time, that's uh, traffic safety on that road. And it is a concern. But I got kind of curious, and I went back and to how many incidents we had over there, and it seems like uh, most of our incidents were <laughs> the, the hot area, the 300 block of 3,000 block of, of the highway, which is in Potter Township. So most all of the instances are in Potter Township. We have very few in, in ta Harris Township. We had one person run into a guardrail here, I guess, during the wing fest. But, so it, that is not a, a safe road, but it is a better road than it was before. PennDOT has worked very hard on it. So. I looked at that, and, I'm, and I, am, I am confident that that should not be a reason, the safety of the road should not be a reason to deny, to deny um, this request to keep it as agriculture. So I, I don't know, uh, um, uh, you brought up tabling it, but I, we don't, we'd like to get this going. So I'm going to, I don't know how to work, this is going to be a little issue here. I'm going to move. Let me see what that says on here. That we adopt this ordinance with the caveat that the animal farm be kept in agriculture. Um, 
if I if I may, mm -hmm. let's. Um, we can do that. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm going I'm to suggest that we have the main motion as stated in our minutes. Okay. And then we. Well, then. Then I'll, we okay. bring that in as a then, as an amendment. Then is that I, is that reasonable for you? Bring it as an amendment. We could do that if yes, if I can make that amendment. Yes. Okay. So, can I have a motion? What, what motion do you want? I'm looking for the motion to approve Ordinance 348, and then we will be open for amendments to that motion. I realize that, excuse me, I realize that uh, since we don't have a second on the motion, we really shouldn't be discussing the motion in particular. Yeah. yeah. However, I, I think it's hasty to do that at this point because there have been a lot of concerns brought up that are more than just the Emil Farm at this point. And so I'm not nowhere near ready to even vote on this this evening. Okay. Well, that was another option, but I wasn't sure how we we're going to handle uh, that. So, but, so if nobody seconds that, it dies. Oh, that wasn't a motion. So. Well, he did well, make a motion. Well, you oh, you, you can make a, make a motion, motion. too. I, I offered a motion, yes. Okay. okay. Would you repeat that for us, well, please? Well, we have two separate motions. I, no, we have only had we one. Have, we have, we have your one. motion, which was to adopt the ordinance with the caveat that the Immel Farm be kept in A. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Denny, do you, have, do you have anything you want to offer from Zoom land? Uh, yeah. I've... Uh, been listening attentively. I need to apologize for not being there in person, but I had a uh, hip replacement two days ago and uh, can't go dancing for a while. Um, I thank all the residents that have commented because I've, I think you've presented some really objective, deep seated thinking, and I appreciate that. I've also been fortunate to chair the Ag Security Area Task Force in the township since it began. And we, we do that every seven years. So uh, I, I don't know how many times you've done it, probably four. I've, I've lived in the township 43 years and uh, live, live in the country, so to speak. So I'm, I'm part of this agriculture feeling. Um, With what I heard this evening from our residents, uh, and I was one of the three supervisors that voted to do the public hearing as we just finished. I, I supported that because I wanted to get input from people. But uh, listening to everybody and, and all the fine thoughts they've given to it, I'm, uh, I'm inclined not to support uh, Ordinance 348. Motion, but no second. To adopt 348 no. with no, the with the. No. We, we don't don't have a second. We, I'm, I'm, he's get, getting, I'm there. getting there. He's getting there. He's getting there. We have motion to adopt 348 with the ML property being accepted. I have not heard a second. I would like to comment. Huh? Okay. Without. Now we're back to regular discussion because there's no motion yeah, on the no floor. Motion. There's no motion on the floor. You can do that. I would like to make a comment. Please, please comment. All right. I'd like to make a comment here. I've listened and I appreciate everybody that talked tonight. Uh, it was well thought out. I didn't hear a lot of emotion. I heard a lot of, of thought. But I wanted to answer some of the questions that are out there. Uh, of all of, the, all of us, I was the one that was on the planning commission when this started, when we got the that what these guys wanted to do. So I was on the planning commission for a year or so before this started. And our instructions were at that time, we were concerned because of a lot of the farms being bought up into being developed and losing ag lands in a lot of the center region. We were also worried about the road coming up through and would we have rudders and sheets coming up and putting you know, ag or commercial stuff up. So our, our task was given as we want to preserve open space. 
We want to maintain our agriculture and give our farmers more tools to make money. And that was the direction and the impetus behind the start of this. That is what, why it started. There was no uh, secret rendezvous type thing. That's exactly why it started. So from day one, I have been kind of steered towards the, and I'm going to answer the second part because you asked each of us to give where our position was. And my position was always ag. You know, let's, what are we going to do to preserve ag? And as was mentioned about the methodology, as I went through that every time, I could not see that property going in. I think we have a twofold issue here. I think I agree with Bud, their ordinance, there's a lot of good stuff in that ordinance that protects our open space and helps our farmers. The problem is the map. We've got a map that is just, I, I, I keep voting, let's, let's fix the map. Let's leave the ordinance alone, let's fix the map. And I think if we, if we go back, if we're gonna, I don't wanna table, because I know we got developers that have been waiting on this ordinance, because they have properties they wanna go and it keeps getting delayed. So I don't wanna keep delaying them you know, it's, it's a catch-22, but I really believe, I truly believe we've got to get the map right. I'd like to vote on the ordinance and do the map separate, but I guess we have to, we have to keep them together by the way the law is written. Mm -hmm. So we got to get this map straight, and I think if we get the map straight, everything else will, will, will come together. And as far as being, you know, farmers on the planning commission, like you said, we get applications, and every year we ask for applications to go on our ABCs. Please fill out an application, ask to go on our ABCs. And that's the way we get people, and that's where we hear the stuff coming back. And they're citizens, we appoint them every January. If you wanna be on one of those, please fill out an ABC app that we can get you on a committee of some sort, either that or planning commission or shade tree or something like that. So I wanted to answer those questions for everybody, but that's where I'm standing. I'm still on the ag line. I'm, I don't think we need to change it. I think we're I think we're fighting the wrong way. Nigel, any comments? Uh, yeah. We, this is gonna might be a little scattered here because there's so many things going through my head. But I would like to tell you all how <coughs> I got to where I was with the map the way it was presented. And largely is because I trust our planning commission. They've done a really good job for us with everything they've ever done. And our planner has been excellent. Our zoning officer is excellent. And so the impetus behind all this, as Frank just explained, was to try to give farmers more opportunity to um, more tools to succeed. However, with the develop, what I understood right from the start, the development in the township um, that has encroached on so much land that what you know has been up to now ag land and still is because we haven't approved a motion here um, it seemed like some of these smaller operations just didn't make sense and because of their location um, they certain things shouldn't happen on them that were going to be allowed to happen on other properties just because of the encroachment being close to neighbors and all that now, that being said, I'm not sure that's such a big deal. And the Immel property was the first one that came up, and now we hear of two others all of a sudden. And do we, perhaps we need to look at this deeper. I understand maybe developers are trying to, you know, get plans in, but we want to do this right. And we don't want to take anybody's livelihood away from them. And, and again, I think I'm the only one on the board that's not retired at this point. So, you know, I'm pretty busy in my life. I try to do as much as I can to keep up with, you know, what's going on. But early on in the process, um, our legal counsel was suggesting that if we left that at that particular parcel ag in the location it was, we could get a challenge from the state for spot zoning. And Perhaps I don't understand that quite right, but so I was concerned about that. And yes, I brought up the safety issue with uh, um, access to that property being right in a dip with very poor sight distance to the east. And I, that concerns me, but 
these things may not be insurmountable. The other thing is that's odd is the way the, the property's been subdivided with um, a caveat that it can't be subdivided or divided, adjusted anymore. And I don't know why that happened initially and what the you know landowners that agreed that was going to be it decided to do that. But because of that, I'm also con so what's going to happen with that? Those two properties I heard and I suspected right from the start that was, there was going to be an application to reconsolidate so it would have direct access to the highway. Therefore, it would be, if it was ag, be subject to all this. Um, possibilities for um, generating income. Now, again, I obviously, we're here to listen. Thank you for, um, was it Jack Stevens that said that? I would think there was more, more per people than that. We are here to listen. And we're not here, we're not influenced by anybody. Nobody's putting money in our pockets to go one way or the, or the other. We're all residents here. We care about our township. We care a lot about our township. We want to do things right. And uh, so I think we've got to hold off. We need to table this. We need to just think a little more and look at it again. And if it takes a few months longer, let it, you know, so be it. But I want to do it right. Thank you. Bob, additional comments? Uh, well, the only additional comment would be is, uh, I, I wouldn't mind tabling it, it's, but it's the issue of the map, not the, not the ordinance itself. Uh, Frank, I think, said that the, the, Frank, the ordinance is satisfied with that. It is the, the, our zoning district map. And uh, that map is important because that divides uh, our primary growth area to our, to our, our uh, rural growth area. And uh, to me, that's the most important is preserving our rural growth. We've, we've made certain strides in here to allow them. If you're outside of our growth area, we made certain strides so you can do things with your property. But we want to preserve the rural character of it. And that's what this would do. So I don't know that, that holding up this ordinance would if we could get the map straight, <laughs> the ordinance is fine. I don't see anything wrong with the ordinance. I, mean, I guess that this, the, the other thing was through in Bailey Lane. I, we had heard, the first I'd heard of it, and the first I realized that part of the Bailey Lane was not. So it's up to the board. But I am convinced that we need to keep this as agriculture. Uh, so, but that means changing the map, not the ordinance. So how do we want to go from there? Okay. Um, do we have comments from Chairman Haymeister? No, I'm fine, Bruce. Okay, thank you. We, 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 did, we did not have a motion to table, correct? We, 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 don't have a, we do not have a motion, so we don't need a motion to table. You, you should make a motion to table. I wasn't sure about that, Bruce. So. I, table what? Table, <laughs> table what? Action on the ordinance. No. Well, it, We're good. up on that. I'm not... After hearing um, from other property owners, other than the Immels that have um, farms that may be affected by this, I, I want to know more. Okay, let and me. So I'm not even convinced every little particular part of that, um, you know, rural residential classification use it, you know, uses, excuse me, um, <laughs> are are really, really where we want to go every single thing that we've right, well, decided to prohibit. All of a sudden, a hang on. Um, oh, so, so you can't have a bed and breakfast in a ag property that's rural residential, apparently. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Because what I heard tonight is two things. The rural residential district is problematic, which is what we heard over the last, we've heard from a lot of people over the last couple of days, which is great. We don't hear from a lot of people usually. So that's problematic. And then also, agritainment is not allowed now under our ordinance. Tate Farms and Wasson Farms are doing agritainment now, and we've sort of let it go because they're out on, and that was one of the impetus for putting it on, in, uh, on a arterial street, which is Route 322 and Route 45, because those roads are designed to take more traffic than a more, res more rural area, more rural road. So I think that the agritainment regulations, which are agritainment regulations, largely came out of Lancaster County and then also from the state. The state rural center, uh, Center for Rural Pennsylvania, did some regulations on agritainment that we also used. And I know the state of Pennsylvania right now is passing a law that would allow agritainment, or working on a law that would allow agritainment and uses because it is not our, 
it is not something that is traditionally allowed on farms right now. So I know that's a conversation piece. So I think we need to look at, and, and I think maybe when we look at rural residential, because we do have Bear Meadows is one, Rocky Ridge is another one. Um, we have Hunt Ridge Manor is another one. We have large lot developments that are developed in our rural areas that will not be developed again because they're built out. Maybe that's what rural residential morphs into and it, it encompasses these developments that are already developed and maybe we look back at the ag and then look at, and I remember talking with Mrs. Langridge about her concerns with the ag retainment and maybe we look at that again and see and wait and see what the state ends up doing with ag retainment and their definitions in the bill that they have put forth through their committee. That's just my suggestion. That, and then you could keep, you could parse out the ag properties, keep the rural residential into the residential neighborhoods keep the ag properties in the rest of the township. We'd have to look at the methodology again, make sure that works. And I think it might work, but we'd have to switch some of the criteria under rural residential and then look at the ag retainment. Cause I feel like ag retainment is something that's gonna keep evolving because it's evolved just in the last five years. Okay, uh, let me, uh, I gotta take the damn mask off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let me try to summarize here, use my prerogative as chair of this meeting. We appreciate everybody's input. I hope you recognize that we don't rush into these things. God, we've been doing it for, what, nine years? <laughs> um, we've heard that we need to go think about it some more, take these things into consideration that have been brought up today. Um, any decisions that we make in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, is not irreversible. We have the ability to modify our decisions if we get it less than perfect, and we do occasionally get it less than perfect. So we're, you know, we're we're going to try to listen to what you've all had to say. Um, we're going to ask our professionals to reflect upon this. And um, we'll be back. What are you looking for? A table? It's a motion? So we don't have a motion to table. <laughs> well, I move. Uh, okay. It looks we're like. Gonna, it looks like. Uh, get, we're, rid of, we're, uh, get rid of the mask. Uh, I, gonna, I'll do that. I, uh, it well, seems well, like. We don't even need to make a motion. I make a motion. We table it. Do you want to send table. it back to the planning commission? Is my next question. Well, we are going to. I. I. Let me. <laughs> let me. I will move. Did we send this back to the planning commission? To okay. reflect upon Same the thing. comments that we've heard tonight. Can I have a second? second. Yes. Okay. Any discussion on that? Well, I, yes, I'll discuss on that. I mean, we again, I, I, we've sent it down there a million times. It keeps coming back the same way. Um, yeah. I, I would like to, if, if we're going to send it down there, I think we need to send it down with some specific, I'm oh, sorry, specific instructions, you know, or, or a time limit or something, or why don't we have a joint meeting with them? I, was, I think that's a better idea. Have, I have something where we're going to be in the same room and, and talk about it at the same time instead of having two groups come back and we, you know, what's the definition? And I, I agree 100%. I was, yeah. I was going to suggest that myself. Okay. So, um, so I, I think Denny, Denny, Denny's, Denny's, Denny's trying to say, to say something. something. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in a uh, public hearing kind of opportunity particularly involving the people that are sitting in the audience. Our planning commission people need to hear, not read, but hear directly from them. I, th I thank them for, being, for giving us that, that feedback. So we certainly, we certainly can publicize the meeting of the planning commission yes. and the fact that um, Let's do a joint meeting. it is a public meeting. And I think a joint meeting is a great idea and, and so, um, quick comment, please. Yeah, well, about your meetings, great idea. I appreciate it. Um, recognizing that the ag community is mostly affected by this, the tweaking that needs to be done, let's have some of those people present. Why, well, are, they, why are they not there? Are, are you on the township mailing list? No, I don't get any time on the township. Well, you should talk to our manager here because we send out a <laughs> newsletter Several times, Several times a month. So, uh, tell, telling you what's going on in the township, what meetings are coming up, and stuff like that. Would the farm community be welcome at that meeting? Oh, yes. 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 Y
Yes. Of yes. Course. Everybody's you're of, welcome. You're part of the community. Absolutely. We'll, okay. we'll, and we can send out a separate mailing to the farm community again to make them aware. Of okay. This. We have we have a motion to send this back to the to a joint meeting to a joint meeting with the planning commission and the supervisors. Is this pertinent to this? Yeah. With, with what purpose? No, I, I think we need can to have it, a can purpose. Can you come up to the podium? Make it, please. please I, I got it. I got it. I just wanted to mention in my experience with working with other townships that they have organized, like when it comes to the ag, a group of farmers to come get, meet and then, and then give some input to the township on, because they're the ones that do this every day. They know what the operation is. They know what it takes and to help you guys. So that's just the quick suggestion. Bruce, let me also indicate Please. we've done the ag security public process three times. That program requires three agricultural people on the committee. We have had to beat the bushes to get three agriculture people to serve with us in the ag security area. So we've given opportunity a plenty, but we haven't had to reply to those kinds of opportunities. So. It's not that we've not tried. Thank you. Well, again, if anybody, just in general, uh, farming community, if you're not on the township's mail, new mailing list, please get on it. We send out information regularly, and we certainly welcome your input. We have a motion and a second to have a combined meeting. Oh. the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors to further discuss this. Any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Take, no. We have to raise our hand. You want us to raise okay. our hand, Jack? No, we're good. <laughs> we have a roll call vote. Thank you all very much. Okay. We'll move on to, um, I'll, I'll give a brief, brief second for those people that want to want to depart before we get on to our next exciting topic. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to take a little potty break. Yeah, we're going to take a little potty break. Yeah. All right, we got through that.
can can we have some? Thank you, thank you all. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the mask back on. Oh geez, I was just getting comfortable. I know. Uh, thanks, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, it's good for you. Builds character. Okay, <laughs> Part B, State College Area Connector Project. Okay. Please. The main event. Um, PennDOT released nine alternatives for the State College Area Connector Project. Mark, can you shut that door? For the State College Area Connector Project. Unlock it. Five <laughs> of these alignments are grouped along Route 322, three are grouped along Route 144, and one maintains the existing alignment of the roadway. And we put over on the table when you came in the, the mapping that shows the two alignments, information about the public meeting that's coming up on September 22nd and 23rd, and information about um, how you can participate in that public meeting. So of concern to the township, we found out, we met with PennDOT August 31st, they had a special meeting just for local officials to go over the alignments. That's the first we saw it. Of concern to us is that two of the proposed alignments, 322-4 and 322-5, propose an interchange that would be located on Discovery Drive on top of our brand new maintenance facility, Bricks and Stones, Calvary Baptist Church, and all the businesses out there. We've contacted them separately and made them aware of the possible interchange and asked them to reach out to PennDOT. Um, PennDOT officials said they did not have the facility mapped when they did their mapping for the alignments. We've found out since then in talking with them, most of their background mapping is very old. So they're working on, they don't have Kaywood North shown, they don't have Rocky Ridge shown, they don't have some of the other developments shown. So they're working on updating the mapping. They didn't have our ag security area, area mapped correctly, so they're working on mapping that. Um, we provided HOA contact information uh, for all the neighborhoods out, and I didn't have one for Bear Meadows, but all the neighborhoods out that are along 322 and 45 that could be impacted. It is critically important that PennDOT hear from residents that could be impacted by the highway. They will, they told us at our meeting on August 31st that they will be using the feedback they receive at this meeting to narrow down the alignments. Their goal is they're gonna go into 2022 and look at two to three alignments and they're gonna pick a final alignment for this road in 2024. And I asked the question about funding because that seems to be the literally million dollar question they said it's on the 12-year plan, and Frank would know better than I because he sits on the MPO, but it's on the 12-year plan. They intend to do this project. So PennDOT, we're encouraging everybody to go. The open houses are September 22nd and 23rd at Mountain View Country Club. It'll be in the big ballroom right off of the golf course from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's an open house style. Um, they have consultants. Their consultants are very nice people, but try to talk to the people from PennDOT because the people from PennDOT are from our local district and they know the area a little bit better than the people from the consulting group. And you will have the opportunity there to submit comment. You can also submit written comment to Dean Ball at PennDOT. We have the information over there. Comments are due back by October 3rd. So the supervisors tonight, I think, wanted to talk about what we heard and perhaps formulate some official comment that we want to submit back to PennDOT on the road. Uh, Amy, yes. could, could I say something on it? Uh, one of the things to keep in mind, and, and I, this process that PennDOT's going through is only the second or third we've looked at in this, this area. It's the way they look at roads now. It's not like the old, we'll go through the same process, but it's not the old one where they come with a, 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 a here's the road, and we, then we make comments. All these comments are made ahead of time. But one thing to keep in mind, they could, they could say we're going to send all nine of these out. But where they go from here is they go to NEPA, which is National Environmental Protection Agency. And then they'll look at them and they'll say, nope, wetlands, nope, you know, that or whatever. And, they, and we will be lucky to get one or two back, maybe three at the most. So when they narrow these down, and it, it, they'd like to send as many as they can to NEPA because they cut a lot of them out. But hopefully we can get six or so out of this process that they can look at that when it comes back from NEPA, hopefully we get one or two that we can make a decision. So that's where the process is different than where it was before. Yes, thank you. Excuse me? Mike, when I have wetlands, so like should we submit a picture to you guys? Would that be helpful? So first of all, can you go over, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so what you should do is you guys should go to that public meeting. That we plan to. Yeah, go to the open house, and I would take documentation and tell them. And, okay. 
Okay. Tell them you have wetlands and this, this is your concern and this is where you live and you're <coughs> affected by 322.4 and 322.5, those alignments, and, and make them aware of that. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you need to make all your comments to the to PennDOT because it's, that's what they're going to go by. And I would, yeah, and we should get the Ubers to go too because they're really wetlands yes. through there also. Your whole community should go. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And I, w I would submit things to them in writing as well as talking to them at the meeting so there's documentation of what you've okay. submitted. Thanks. And I appreciate have, that. They'll have comment forms available at the public meeting so you can submit your written comment right there. What would help if you designate a spokesman for your community that speaks for your community, speaks for everybody as one voice? rather than a lot of voices muffled together. Okay. I, my, my experience is that we have, we have one person from your community as a spokesman. Okay. And just go with that. Review. And also, you might want to consider, this is happening out, I know the Aspen Heights folks have reached out to the Kaywood North folks. They're going to try to coordinate comments together because they're one area that's impacted. So like Laurel, Wally, You want to might reach out to your, yeah. Okay. <coughs> and Tussie Mountain is, would be another one. They're also going to be impacted. So you might want to, and we're trying to do that on Discovery Drive as well with the businesses and the church okay. that are out there. Okay. Okay. I can work on figuring out somebody. I, I mean, I'd do it if nobody else would. You so. could be, I would. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? On this, yes, please. Wait. Oh, hang on, um, Denny. Let's have a public comment, and then we'll we'll go to okay. us. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. Um, Rosemont Drive, which is Laurel Hills. There's kind of one going right through us. Yeah. Um, my question really is, what happens if you put the highway in my front yard? Do does do they buy my house or? <laughs> yeah, they have, they, when they did the Potter's Mills project, uh, one of our former employees, his parents had their house bought out by PennDOT, and they'll okay. come in, and they have a real estate division, and they'll help relocate you to another location. Okay. <laughs> with a, with a, with a, with moving cost and a premium on the fair market yeah. value. They, they don't just take your land. Can I just say, this is Jack Stevens again. We went through this 12 years ago. I remember the two engineers and the Secretary of Transportation and the way they get around not coming through your front yard is figure out how to keep 50 feet away. Because on the eight routes, I was one of them. I don't know if you guys know where I live on Cedar Run Road. They threatened to come right through and they drew a line through the corner of my garage and they said, and if you keep mopping off, we'll stay 51 feet away and we won't have to pay you a dime. So you have to be careful. These people have played this game for a long time. Just play out. You wouldn't be mouthing off. No, no. You know K and K, who they were? Quick question. Those of us in the park and rec, we are obviously, it's what you, one of these proposals is right through our new Tussie Pond Park. Okay. Um, we are the only township that has a pond. You probably don't know too much about it yet because it hasn't been developed, but we're working on it with, um, it's a beautiful piece of land. I hope it's to the right of Calvary Baptist Church. Now, my question is, is there something as a group that we could, could we voice? Could we be a voice and present that? Yes, absolutely. And okay. Frank was over with the people from PennDOT adding things to their map while we were talking to them, which was great. So we were adding uh, the park while we were there. But I think in the comments that we send back from the township, we need to include Tussie Pond Park, our maintenance facility, and our, our overall concerns with the alignment, possible alignments. But a voice combined. With yes. Yep. Okay, good. Thanks. Jack. Again? Yes. I'll pay rental fees for this. <laughs> But the last time this went through, uh, Jake Corman was not the chair of the Transportation Committee. His father was. If you want to get to the person in transportation, it's our senator from Center County, Jake Corman, who's the head of the Transportation Committee. And so, yes, it's nice to talk to these people at these meetings, but sometimes those notes get lost. But if you go talk to Senator Corman in Belfont, that won't get I guess what perturbs me greatly is that uh, 
we have PennDOT using information that does not include the ag security area. We've been, we've been working on that 24 years and to see a statement that they don't, they did not take the time to find about the ag security areas and the Kayward Northern Rocky Ridge, it doesn't take much to see a development being built. We did send them the updated ag security area and they did tell me they're working on updating the background mapping and they were gonna send that back to us to make sure they got it correct this time, but I don't know why they didn't well, we, do it. We shouldn't be doing their homework. Thank you, Paul, for the one person that doesn't know you, would you introduce yourself? <laughs> what? What? Tell, Tell, us, who you are, Tell us who you are, Paul. Um, I spent five years of my life working on this project. Uh, they had seven million dollars allocated to have uh, citizen input. And we went to very many meetings until they ran out of the $7 million. And then that was 12 years ago? Yeah. Than 12, yes, it went for two years. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the last presentation, the last meeting we had, uh, 144-3 was one that they considered at that time. And many people, think that the to be screening uh, the US 322 quarters makes all the sense in the world. But, um, you know, I won't repeat what we heard, but um, many cases, says um, the noise affecting Bullsburg and Harris Township, the, the homes, um, the homes that get replaced, I mean, this is a very expensive land over there. And uh, so most of the 322 quarters are going to cost more. And I will go to the meeting and try to argue for the 144.3 alternative because you know, you figure out, you think that going to the, what we call the bypass, going through um, you know, and it, it um, accomplishes all of that that you want to accomplish because the, going through 144 and going through the end of the bypass, you can get to State College almost this quickly. Uh, and so I think that's the position to take, yeah, and um, any of the 322 alternatives will go through houses and uh, parks and, and uh, 
will affect um, will affect Harris Township residents more than the 144 build alternative. Paul, are you saying that we should unite and present 144 as a, a township, a community, and this is our preference? Yeah, I think so. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Anybody else would like to address this issue? Anybody on the board have any comments? Oh, we, do we have to do comments, or is that something we're going to do on the internet? Or I would, I would do a I comment. Yeah, I think you should get your comments together now. Okay. Uh, well, what? Well, it's, it's it's still early to tell anything. This is this is their their early dog and pony show, and we didn't really learn anything. We went up and looked at those charts. They had 15 charts and they had colors and they had squares and they had everything. And they didn't put it all together. But one thing that Paul just mentioned about the houses, I did notice that the 322 quarter was, I believe they listed as 34 houses would have to come down. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that, but it's a lot. Uh, I, I, this is such an unnecessary thing to me. It's, 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 it is because it's been 20 years, it's caused people angst, are they going to lose their house, not going to lose their house, and, it's, and they know what they want to do, I'm sure they, they do. But what is interesting is, well, I talked to truckers, I have an association with truckers. Trucks are, are the problem in 322. It, it is one of the major, major problems. If you still have to direct traffic or whatever, trucks are the major problem coming up 322, up the corridor from Harrisburg. All truck traffic is generated before or at Harrisburg. All they what trucks would love to do is get on that turnpike. They'd love to do it, and it would eliminate all this through traffic. They're all, the, the majority are going to 80, they're going west, Ohio, Detroit, they're going that way. This is the way they have to travel right now. The turnpike, a trucker, it's 500 bucks one way on a turnpike through Pennsylvania. And that's ridiculous. If they could bring that down to get truckers at a reasonable fee, they would do that. They'd get on a turnpike, and they would go to high, and it would eliminate a lot of traffic on 322 going through here. So I agree with Paul that the, the most sensible thing is from where Potter's Mills is to where in Pleasant Gap or down in, in what I guess the, they hit 80, that's about a seven or eight mile stretch down through there. You leave Potter's Mills, you go through here, State College, come on on 44, 99, that's 22 miles. Now you know two things happen there. The tribes don't want to drive any more miles than they have to, it, and that makes so much sense to get to cut it right, right where it was intended 50 years ago when they put that dead end at the top of Seven Mountains. That road, you could see that road was headed right over there. So my guess is that Paul is right. That is the best alternative, to, and and keep 322 and keep improvements. They've been improving that all the time. The basic uh, US 322 can be a reasonable road. Uh, what, I don't, what I don't know is, and I haven't read the mission, is their goal safety or is their goal get traffic through here faster? You can't have both. So uh, Paul is right. I think that we need to push that, keep 322 existing, and may keep the improvements on that, and you will be able to drive, you'll be able to go on 322 off that bypass. I'm sure you, don't, you won't have to drive, go to Pleasant Cap to come back into State College. They will make a, a, a service road or whatever road you want it is, like it is, leave it as like now, and you can come to that, that that's that stretch through state through Bowlesburg State College. So I think Paul's right. We need to sit down, and look at it, and say this is what we want, and not and not settle for anything less. Simple as that. Okay. Nigel, comments? Yes, indeed. I commented right from the start about the name of this project, the yeah. State College Connector <laughs> yeah. Project, because that is yeah. not what it is. That's right. It's the 322 I80 connector um, via 144, and. It just makes no sense whatsoever to bring all this extra traffic through a more urban area and um, disrupting so much more than um, taking it more directly uh, from, you know, along, sort of along the 144 corridor as close as they possibly can. And there is going to be a lot fewer impacts because of that. and. Um, in the long run, it just makes a lot more sense because I mean, 22 miles, 8 miles, seriously. All that extra fuel getting burned up because PennDOT doesn't want to build a road over a mountain, 
Well, they go around the mountain. Well, they're going to go. Yeah. They're going to go through a it's pass, through. but there's going to be a lot of cutting involved, yeah. and so that expense for for the cut is one of the biggest factors that they for not wanting to just do that. So we have to take a stand and just say it doesn't make sense to bring that traffic through here. May and 322 will be fine as a local, basically a more local road um, for local people that actually want to come to State College from the east. And it, traffic will be uh, reduced substantially, so it will no longer be that dangerous. Um, let me, let me, Chairman Haymeister, any comments? Yes, I would like to ask Amy to uh, get the February 2019 letter out that we sent to uh, PennDOT and distribute that on our email uh, server. We, we sadly did not get a reply from PennDOT on the position that we took, but what's been said this evening, I think supports that letter and making sure that we don't want the road through uh, through Bowlesburg and take it over the mountain. So I, th I think it was February 2019, right, Amy? Yeah, I'm trying to move this along, but please. Can I just say one comment? Um, uh, I went to Harrisburg with um, uh, Chris from the mansion, um, Chris yeah, Chris Lee. Um, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Jim Hatch, who's no longer with us, possibly Paul, I can't remember the third person. And we met with some of the senators for, do you remember the high-speed rail? The high-speed rail, they spent a million dollars on the high-speed rail study and it was going right along the top of our ridge, okay? I mean, they pursued that up one side and down the other. Luckily, it didn't go through. That's because it was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> really? Frank, Frank, that's the last word. Okay, um, a couple things. Um, one thing to keep in mind is, you know, Nigel mentioned it, you know, that going up 144, when you, when you go talk to PennDOT, greenhouse gases. You get less greenhouse gases going seven miles than you do 22 miles. But one other thing I want to do, and, I, and I, I'm on the MPO, and I've been to just about every one of these things in the PennDOT. I get the, there's a PennDOT uh, quarterly report that I, I sit in on. And I will tell you that part of this process, all nine of these that, that are, are alternatives, when they get kicked out, that doesn't necessarily end them. They can say, that's a project that we, we aren't going to put into this connector, but it's something we want to do in the future. So what I've bent their ear about every time I can is do this one, go up over, go up over Center Hall Mountain and take care of that. Take 322 and change its designation to business 322. Put some red lights coming up through there. Maybe widen it, put some wider ber berms on that we can use for like Penn State traffic to, to get it moving along so you can have two lanes going out. But make that a business, because if we don't, somebody's, it's, it's not gonna die. They'll put it up over Penn, and somebody from Penn State will say, you know, I really like to have a four lane to go take that shortcut, and it'll come right back to us. So if we, if we say we wanna have it go over 144, we also wanna say we wanna make 322 a business route and take the, the traffic out of it and make it a slower, process to go up that nine miles because if we don't it'll come back okay I'm, I'm gonna go ahead please. One more quick point. Yeah. Um, consider football traffic taking that new 144 bypass to intersect with interchange with i-99 and going directly into the stadium no problems and it's only gonna you know basically you have you have a, a four-lane highway going from potter's mills over the mountain connecting to uh, i-99 and it'll be just as quick as coming straight in 322 yeah, to get to that stadium. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, wrap. make one comment? Sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Frank started it, Frank started it. I Frank did. started it. Well, we have, we will have, this is an interesting aspect of this too. It's sort of a little bit of a, 
a little bit of a, uh, of a, of a plan we have. Where there's, you're going to see the Center Region Climate Action Adaption Plan will be coming around shortly. And that, that has to do with everything in the climate, that has to do with get greenhouse gases and everything else. And certainly, certainly the amount of truck traffic will help us reduce our emissions to what, we, what, we, what the goal will be. So that is one um, thing we may have working for us in, in that benefit. So that, that's just a, maybe a little bit more of ammunition. All right, well, let, okay. me, let me wrap this up with my own comments. Um, number one is, no matter what decision is made, that doesn't preclude improvements to the existing 322 route. And we should put, continue to push for that because that road itself needs improvements no matter what other alternatives are chosen. The second one is, please, please, please attend the public meeting and get your input in there. It's going to be important that we have a large presence there and that they hear us speak. So September 22nd and 23rd at Mountain View in the big ballroom from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's open house style. There is no formal presentation. And just one other comment that uh, we made to PennDOT, we've had a lot of folks that want to ride their bikes up to uh, Rothrock State Forest, and we commented to PennDOT, we're updating the township's official map, and we'll be showing that connection, and PennDOT made a note about that as well. So if you are a bicyclist, I've told this to a couple people in the bicycle community, push for that as well, because they said they realized there will be other ancillary projects they'll have to do, and in the Philadelphia area, they built a four-lane highway and put a shared-use bike ped path right next to it. So there's precedent for it to happen. And we will continue to publicize this in the township newsletter. If you are not on the township mailing list, call Amy. get on it. Send call Amy. Or, or call Amy. Just call her, call <laughs> Amy and ask her what's going on. She's got plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. Just call all right. all the time. Uh, two or three times a day. <laughs> or stop by. Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, moving on, we have the replot of lots 3-6. Uh, okay, the ready? Piverado, how did I Piverado. do? Piverado Estate Subdivision and move, Lot 2. Move to approve the waiver request. Oh, well, do you want to introduce this first? <laughs> no, we, we're, we're, no, but make go, a motion. Go, okay. make go. Move to, uh, chapter 11, Article 3, Section 1. Move to approve the replot of Lot 3 through 6 of the Piverado Estate Subdivision and Lot 2 of the Rawless, Rawless Subdivision. Contingent upon satisfactory, blah, blah, blah. Second. <laughs> Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Passed. Nittany Grove revised final land development plan. Whose turn? Chairman, I'd move to approve the Nittany Grove revised final land development plan contingent upon satisfactory completion of the comments from August 27, 2021 memo to the principal planner and the September 3rd, 2021 letters to the township engineer and zoning officer. Nigel, your turn to second. Second. <laughs> Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. nay. Just a comment. This is pretty routine stuff. It's all taken care of. So we really have. It's already been approved. It's all covered. It's already, already been read approved. <laughs> we already read it. My turn? Oh, Frank's turn. Resolution 21-21 oh, Campbell Track Subdivision oh, Component 2 Planning Module. I move that move to a planning module for Campbell Track Subdivision Plan referred to the DEP for approval. Your turn, bud. Mike, second. <laughs> okay, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 See how we oppose? Nay. Okay, See how we can move? Okay, this is a good one, actually. It is a good one. The Village District Parking Committee. So please. we've heard from the following residents who would like to be on the Village District uh, Parking you, you Committee. You call the names out. <laughs> yeah, let's hear them. Okay, Ken Hall, who's a resident of Academy Street. Barbara Eslick, who's a resident of Springfield Commons. Tracy Moriarty, who's a business owner of Duffy's. Jen Bailey, resident of West Main Street. Robin Browse, whose business, uh, she works at a basket full. Rebecca Elman, who's a resident and a business owner on East Main Street. Susan Heckendorn, who's a resident of East Main Street. Chuck Rizzio, who's a resident of The Hill. Diane Farr, resident of Academy Street. Jackie Rudder, resident of Woodmont Street. 
Bill Smith, resident of West Main Street. Bob Hoffman, business owner, Hoffman Leaker Ar Architecture, his building's on the diamond. Cheryl Speakman, she's a resident of Liberty Hill and the former business owner of the Springfield House. And the Planning Commission has also asked that they could have a if they could have a liaison to the committee. Uh, when we did the small area plan a few years ago, we had 13 members plus a liaison from the board and a liaison from the Planning Commission. Uh, I'm going to. 13. I'm going to move that these people all be on this committee. Uh, I suspect they won't all show up at one time. I hope. <laughs> but uh, I but, don't know. but we don't. But it's a good thing if they do. So. Uh, I think they, they show interest. Let's get them. Let's get them in, into the committee. There's 13 names on the list. Uh, I'll second. second. I'll second. Sure. Any further discussion? I think we have a good representation of business owners and, and residents, um, residents from throughout the township as well. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. That passes. Planners are bailing on us. You want to do this with Amy? What? Oh, the Mary Elizabeth Street culvert. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. We could put you get a little more work on your table. <laughs> Another couple of meetings, huh? Okay, Mary Elizabeth Street culvert repair. So the township received notification from the county commissioners that we'll be receiving funding from funding toward the Mary Elizabeth Street culvert repair. The commissioners approved transferring the $45,000 liquid fuels grant we received for the West Main Street culvert to the Mary Elizabeth Street project. They also approved an additional $60,000 in Act 13 funds for the repair. Um, staff confirmed through PSATs that we can use our American Rescue Plan Act ARPA monies for the culvert projects. So we would propose that the board approve the use of the ARPA funding for our share of the project. That share is estimated to be approximately $132,000 when we'll know the final number once the design is completed. Uh, we also propose that we replace the lost grant funds for the West Main Street culvert project through our ARPA allocation. The total cost for the project is $86,000. 35 is include 35,000 is included in our 2021 budget, which leaves 51,000 to be paid through the ARPA funds. Uh, we received we are receiving $632,000 in the ARPA money. We got $316,000 in Ju uh, July or August. So I just need a motion so we can get the money allocated. And they're out doing the survey on the culvert now as we speak. I move to allocate the 132000 of the Township Department funding to Mary Elizabeth Street Culver Repair Project and 51000 to the West Main Street Culver Project. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. I'll comment on after the fact. Uh, that uh, we are pushing we're going new for, for no no we're pushing oh. to complete that Mary Elizabeth uh, culvert <laughs> the entire length in in the next tip yes yes, yes we are yep. so that is going to the next not tip not not, not replace it but fit, keep funded yes keep slip yes. lining it yeah yes. yep okay move to prove the person of 2019 no, tow master no we're, we're on what? H we skipped yes. H I Forgot thought that was it no. proposal to update the township's Wait, wireless no. facilities oh that right. oh yeah okay. Let me do that. Sure. Move to approve the, approve the proposal from Cohen Law Group to update the Township's Wireless Facilities Ordinance. Second. All those in uh, discussion? Yeah, uh, just one quick question. How come every time the state passes a law, it costs us five grand? Because that's the state of Pennsylvania for you. <coughs> All right. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. Now, motion passes. Move to approve the purchase of 2019 Towmaster T24 Trailer from Cleveland Brothers for $13,500. Oh, and they're lucky yeah. to find it. And they're lucky to find it. They're lucky to find it. And I want to point out, they came in $400 under budget. And I didn't think that was possible with this project. So. Okay. Do we have a, we had a second? Yep. Yeah. All right. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving right along. Resolution 21-22, approving the township's mineral, minimum municipal obligation for its pension plan for 2022. So moved. Second. <laughs> 
Michael. <laughs> was it my turn? turn. Oh, well, sorry. Well, yeah, I was reading that. Okay. okay. Do we have any discussion on this resolution? Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Approval of a consultant for the solar power purchasing program. Maybe a brief. Yeah, um, the Solar Power Purchasing Agreement Working Group is recommending that each member approve the hiring of Green Sky Development Group as the energy service consultant for the project. Total cost is $75,000. The township share of that is expected to be less than $200. And I believe the COG approved that at the last general forum meeting. Mm -hmm. Can we afford $200? Yes. We just oh, say it's on, can the, I have on a, the trailer. Can I have a motion? Yes. Thank, yes. thank you. Second? Yes. Second. All right. Further discussion? I would say, Chris, Harris Township is the last municipality to vote on approving the contract. This Wednesday at 9 o'clock, we will do a Zoom meeting at which all of those votes will be brought together and we'll work for the school district then in processing the, uh, the RFP. So, so we're in good shape. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion passes. Request for a contribution to the Center County Airport Authority's Incentive Fund. Uh, the township received an email from Center County asking that we consider contributing to an incentive fund with the Center County Airport Authority. That fund would be used to help attract another flight to the airport. The authority has been having ongoing discussions with American Airlines about establishing a connecting flight from State College to Charlotte, North Carolina. The county committed $250,000 of their ARPA money to this fund. They're reaching out to municipalities in the county to see if they may, may be willing to make a contribution into the fund. Patton Township, I believe Ferguson Township and College Township have all agreed to make contributions to this point. Um, so I just need to know if you guys are interested in doing the same. And it doesn't have to be a lot. This would be for the 2022 budget year? No, it would be. We have to let them know by September 17th, so we would pay them this year. Do we have that in this year's budget? Yes. Yes. I'd like to say that if you've investigated American Airlines, their current CEO is making in the mid eight digit salary. Uh, that's way over 10 million. Uh, he took a little bump in 2020. He, he lost about 4% of his salary. American Airlines right now is very profitable and I will not support subsidizing American Airlines to come into University Park, they are here now. We don't need to pay them more money to fly to Charlotte. Thank you. Well, I, I, I have a comment also. Um, I, I, on a different level, I don't believe we should pay to pay businesses to come here. If they don't, don't have a good interest to come here, they don't need to come here. But I don't know where that money's going to go. I can't believe it's going to go to America. I don't know where that money's going to go. Well, that's the issue. And as far as him making that money, I'm glad he did. I mean, stockholders are making money. <laughs> Thank you, bud. Th further comments? Do we have any enthusiasm for this? Absolutely none. I, so I, 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 I'm going to say I why. I don't have enough enthusiasm to comment. <laughs> if, if, if we were going to build something with it that would benefit us, you know, a new hangar well, or something, we'd have to that'd improve our runway, do we? Just to say, come here. They aren't going to land up here on the hill, are they? Uh, hey, whatever. I mean, just. Here's some money, okay. please come I, over. I don't, it's, I, it's not a lot of money, but it's, it's the issue here. Right? I, I don't hear any. Tell, tell, tell Mr. Pipe that. We'll tell them we're not interested. We're not interested. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, request the use of the Bullsburg Fire Police. I move to approve the use of the Bullsburg Fire Police for the events listed above. The VFW to park cars at the car show on September 18th and the pumpkin chunkin' event at Howard on October 16th. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. Manager's report. So I'll keep this very brief. Um, Please. I just want to update you on the hiring that we recently did. Uh, we will be welcoming Austin Swanger onto our public works crew. He will join us on Monday. He comes to us um, 
with a good background who works at the Curtain Gap Quarry right now, and he did uh, work part-time for Ferguson Township prior to that, and we're very excited to have him joining us. And we did hire and have our new um, part-time finance assistant, Bridget Armstrong, started. She's a resident of the township, and she has been a little fire starter since she joined us a week ago. We're very excited that she's with us as well. You want to tell the chief that? I didn't laugh. Chief. Chief. Um, Denny has a question, Bruce. Yes. We have any update any of the uh, demolition and removal of the shed? Uh, no, that was... Before, before we start collecting leaves, because we're going to be busy in a month. Yeah, the guys um, were able to get all of their stuff out of there, and I was going to put a call into someone who recently had a barn taken down to see who might have done that and if the person might be interested to come look at our shed. So we're working on it. Um, I feel that we should address the, um, the COVID issue. Um, I'll, I'll start off by telling you my opinion, and that's... I don't like people telling me what to do. I'm not in favor of mandating something. Um, I do like incentives. If our incentives were applied, we would have to apply them to everybody. And if our people that do not want to get vaccinated don't, then that just means we'd be giving incentives to people who have already been vaccinated and further divisiveness amongst our staff. So I'm not <coughs> tremendously enthusiastic about that. <coughs> I like the um, leave alternatives okay. that we've discussed. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think anybody, you know, that tests positive, we should give leave for their their time off as they go into isolation and if they can work from home, that's fine. If they can't, then that's, we should make allowances for that. It shouldn't account against their time off. And let's, I, I, wish, I wish all of our staff were vaccinated. I want them all to be healthy, but um, so that, that's my opinion anyways. Second. I, I agree with you, brother. Yeah, I'm fine. I agree Second. We're all. Michael. Now, this is a hot topic for uh, a special HR committee meeting this Wednesday. Um, and Eric Nornberg has done a lot of research and different programs to uh, encourage um, employees to get vaccinated. Um, we will be discussing that at the COG level, and I think we can hold off. The other consideration, of course, actually, the thing is, we're not affected by. No, we should. We may be affected by uh, President Biden's um, mandate as a public employer. I don't know that it. I have to look because I know it's people that have 100 or more employees. All right, but I, I, but I don't know that it's public employees. I have to find out. The, yeah, that, that might be a detail that didn't come out. But um, you know, one of the things that's uh, a, a possibility is a disincentive program. In other words. The likelihood of an employee that's unvaccinated costing our insurance um, plan <clears throat> more money because they're going to much likely, you know, be sicker than somebody who has been vaccinated. Um, companies are doing this, um, charging their employees that choose not to be vaccinated at, at extra premium for their health, medical insurance coverage, and it makes sense. Um, and that way you're not spending money on everybody to say, and, and who's going to like say, oh, you're going to give me $200 to get vaccinated? Well, no. Everybody else gets $200 that already decided to be vaccinated, and this still person's still not going to get vaccinated because it's not worth it. If you hit them the other way around, it might, it might be more effective. So it's something to consider. Anyway, but let's, let's see what the COG comes up with. Let's find out what's going on with... Uh, 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 President Biden's uh, mandates and uh, look at it again. So our consensus is we're going to believe continue to think about this as things develop. And do the COVID. But we are we are very much in favor of COVID leave for anybody that wants to get shot, wants to get shot or or test positive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think we can maintain the leave 
and let her do that while we're we yeah. yeah I mean the incentive her get get vaccinated you can take a couple of days off if you get sick from the vaccination you know no I mean, problem the thing and is, it's not going to be from your sick time right? right the thing is with us I mean everyone that's gotten vaccinated I got vaccinated on a Sunday and other people did it outside of working hours. So if we were to go back and apply an incentive, we would just be basically giving the people that are vaccinated already, we'd be giving them days off or yeah. we'd be paying them money when they've already done something. So that's kind of why I don't want to, I don't know it's actually going to be an incentive for the folks that aren't vaccinated just in speaking with them. Yeah. I use it as an excuse to just lie around the house and not do any chores for a day. You oh, need, my wife's on Zoom. You need an excuse for that? <laughs> Whoa. Now you're in trouble. Okay. Um, very good. Any, any further thoughts on the marriage report? Okay. Uh, approval of vouchers. Okay. This is fine. Who's the most recent value? 362,792 dollars and 12 cents. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Bruce, I'm going to cut it off because my, my hip is bothering me so. Okay, I'm take, you, you so. take care of yourself. Have a good day, folks. Bye, Bye, Danny. You want to go take the dog for a walk? <laughs> okay, uh, COG committee reports. Let's keep this brief, please. We can uh, skip all of Denny's. He just cut out. Yep. Denny's gone. Okay, so we have, uh, hey, Mr. Amster, human resources. Well, guess what? I couldn't even zoom in because I was racing back from Huntington after bailing the basement over there um, back to early dismissal, so I couldn't even. Early dismissal? Meeting. Well, they, they called an early dismissal the Wednesday of uh, Ida. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Um, so. Finance. No report. Okay, finance, uh, very simple, uh, if I can find it. Uh, finance, uh, the big thing was the building lease, called building lease, and I vote, they, the idea was that, that we could turn ownership over the COG, the building at the end of the lease, and I vote against that because I'm, I'm not sure how that works. There's a lot of discussion, a lot, a lot of discussion about who owns what and who owns, doesn't own what. A COG owns it all, but we are COG. We want to turn our, our share over to COG when leases up and then pay them the difference. Uh, my, my, uh, my off the shoulder, off the cuff thing is we, we're collecting rent that we haven't been reimbursed for our money that's out yet in, 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 in release, in rent. And I think we should still collect rent from that, from the code. Now, now the word is that maybe the code will pay administration. There's a lot, a lot of ways to go. I voted against it, but, but I lost. So you'll hear more about that. Uh, that's the, um, and we got our report, annual report from, if anybody wants to look at it, here's a letter from an attorney. There's our annual report from exp expenditures comparison up until uh, July, I believe, which is a month late. But we're doing well on financial wise. The COG's done very well. That's it. Okay. And uh, climate action oh, is Climate action met today. I, I love Zoom because I can sneak out of there without them tell it, seeing me. I don't even think they missed I was gone, but I was there long enough to do the Climate Action and Adaption Plan, which is CCAP. We went through that. It look, it'll look like this. They voted to advance that on to the general form to send it to us to make comments on it by, I believe it's October meeting, late October meeting. It's interesting. Uh, go through it. Uh, I have a preliminary plan, but um, you'll go through it, and we, can, we have a good chance to comment on it. Uh, that is my report on that. What's the other one? The, uh, what else? The Heritage Museum. Oh, the Heritage Museum had a very good arts festival. Uh, we had uh, maybe 15 vendors show up. I don't know, something like that. Had a good time. We didn't make a lot of money, but it was, it was very, uh, very, very good vendors, and everybody, everybody was there was, was happy with it. So that's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, lost my Here we go. No, I lost uh, mine too. <laughs> who's next? Okay, uh, please. I, I, I attended the joint meeting with the public services and TIVO, which is now the Lucy Committee. 
Um, we basically talked uh, about updating the bike master bike plan for the thing by 2024, so we get that rolling. Uh, we talked about the utility scale solar study and had a presentation on that. And we looked at uh, a proposal to expand the housing choice opportunities in Center County, basically to look at local stuff. Every all the information we get comes from like nationally or state. We said, hey, let's look at it locally. So that's going to be the new one for that. MPO did not meet. We meet the end of this month. Uh, facilities committee. Uh, we met. Uh, we did a lot of. Uh, we had a lot of project updates, which went very quickly. And we also did. Um, we talked about the parks maintenance centralized uh, storage building. We we discussed it. Uh, we wanted a five year lease instead of a three, but other than that, it, we we said okay with that. Uh, we looked at some uh, uh, fiscal uh, condition reports. Uh, we were at the fire department. The fire department needs. I, I'm glad we're not. How should I say? I, we're not into alpha because they want a new building. They, they need that, more that stuff. New house, it's going to cost them two and a half million dollars. It was I, all I said was, I'm glad we're not there. I, I'm glad we didn't have to do it. So that was pretty much it. It was a good meeting. I, I, the one thing that I, was, I can report on the, the uh, facilities committee is Lou's doing such a great job. We've He's got it mapped out, all the money on the Whitehall Regional Park. If you haven't seen that chart, every dollar, when we get it, when it's going to be spent, you know, it goes right out to the end of the project, which is really good. So we, I'm sure we'll be seeing that at, at COG at some point, but uh, that's that's all I have. Oh, and the State College Area Connector, we've talked about that enough tonight. Okay, um, let's see. Public safety, and I don't have notes from public safety, so I'm going to skip that one because I can't find my notes from it. The meeting's over, I forget what I wish. Our Parks Capital Committee um, of Interest. We had the joint meeting of the Parks Capital Committee and Center Region Park and Recreation Authority um, last week. I got a phone call on Sunday that the Parks Authority was not going to participate. Well, say this again now. <laughs> The joint meeting of the Parks Capital Committee and the Center Region Parks and Recreation Authority. authority. I got a call from the chair of the authority that the authority was not going to participate. Okay. okay. I was there representing. So you the still Park, get to go. I Parks <laughs> Capital. And Tom Daubert came as well, but we did not have a quorum, so we did not participate. <laughs> um, so I, I'd say that's probably. So that, the, that's maybe a discussion after the meeting. Uh, that was the yeah, and I had some comments, and you could go on. Okay. Well, we we discussed this at our previous meeting. Um, the Center Region Parks and Recreation Authority has met, and uh, we looked over some basic maintenance type stuff. I'll say the one item: the Action Sports Park is moving forward. Um, is, that, had, is that on Orchard, Orchard Park? In the borough? In the borough? It's in the borough. Yes, okay, Orchard okay. Park. Mm -hmm. um, the, author the, um, the authority was audited by Mather, Mather Deusser, Deussel, anyways. Yeah, whatever, you're right. And, and, you're and, right. They, and they, they, they passed the, um, the uh, audit just fine. And probably one of the more interesting things is the State College School District Memor Memorandum of Understanding with the uh, agency has, is moving forward. Um, we are kind of a second tier organization. In other words, the school district comes first, of course, but we have a fairly high priority. And one of the things we discussed was having um, preset alternatives, so if something happened to a school district where they needed to preempt something that was scheduled for a uh, Center Region Parks and Recreation activity, oh. that there would be an alternative lined up and in place so, so that we wouldn't have to be stumbling around, but would have a plan B already on the table. Didn't they originally say you were, they were not to use any of their facilities? Or no, we're, we've, we've got a memorandum oh, of okay. understanding. Um, one of the things that came out of the, um, of the comprehensive plan was the need for indoor recreational facilities. And that study is 
going to be done sometime in the future. But part A of that is under, memorandum of understanding with the school district. Maybe we could do something with the academy up here mm -hmm. as well in terms of alternatives. Uh, I think there's some thought that the center region may be building indoor facilities. I can tell you that I'm not very enthusiastic mm. about that. Well, it's a few bucks more than what we're spending now. I well, we're we got we got we got some bills to pay now yes, before we, we get to that point. So uh, that'll conclude my my presentation and my committee activities. Anything else for the good of the order? Motion to adjourn. I did have something, but I forget what it was. Oh, oh my God. Just say second. Second. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't it, but. Uh, okay, we're adjourned. I was going to bring some.